but I also scuffle Wessex blades in England. Um, this video is an opportunity for me to showcase something that's been in my mind ever since I got my first batch of 10 ferro rods. Um, I've never got around to doing it because I've always just had enough orders doing the full size ferro rods. So what I'll do is I'll process down the um, handles that I've turned up until now, which are here. Okay, so I'll get them band saw, I get them sanded down. Um, I also want to address a, a very relevant comment that was done, I think it was this morning, about getting a hoover on me sander. So I've sort of rigged up the pipe now, I've figured a way of putting it up. So, yeah, well done. Um, so I'll show that and see how it, so it works. It's not a plan, I just literally, I found a little nook and cranny I can jam the hoover pipe into. Um, and then we'll have a little bit of fun later. My sort of fun. So I'll see you in a bit. And let's get these cut down on my bandsaw and I'll dress them down on the sander. See you in a bit. Okay, so as I sit down on my bandsaw, my new push stick, um, so many things I need to be getting on with. So I'm just literally trying to pick one thing at a time. So if I do this tonight, I've also got my competition as well. I've got the candar to carry on with. And all in all, there's a hell of a lot of work to do. So, last night was finishing off a hornet. If I tackle this tonight, well, it's another step forward. Let's see that away. We'll look about even. wedge in there. And I've got just take me time. Like that. Oh yeah. You can see that I'm using the push stick to bring it towards me. However tempting it is. It's getting cut, it's getting cut. I'm now through. At this point, I don't want to reach forward and grab that one. Do that. Not worth a trip to casualty. Now you'll also notice, as I go forward with the this cylinder, really, a cylinder round tube shape, when I'm addressing it to the blade, I don't just do a straight push. I actually roll it under control. Whether it's the right technique or not, I find it doesn't jump as much if you actually advance it into the bandsaw like that. Over. The bandsaw actually is trying to make it fight this way, so I find it's less chance of the blade jumping about. And for the last one, I pick the longest one, which is this one. That's where my finger's gonna go. So if he's longer than this one, and I can put my push stick and give the pair of them a gentle push. Done. No drama, no fuss, not much action to watch. But I like my fingers. So I've seen a bit on the sander. Okay, so back to my sander. This this block of softwood here that I've got clamped to give me the right height for the cutouts of my plunge lines. There's a little alcove. If I turn the clamp around, I can just jam a hoover pipe in there. It stops up another piece of metal so I can't actually hit the belt. So we'll give that a go in a minute. This point just literally goes to a stop there and it's about that far from the bottom of the belt. We'll give that a go in a minute but first what I'm going to go and do is to drill the centre hole for some ferro rods in these handles. 
and the most accurate way that I've been able to find to do it because I haven't got a free jaw self centering chuck which would be easy because you go on a lathe like that and then you get where the running centre would be you put a chuck in there with the right size drill bit that stays still, this is spinning and you just self centering, boom, go straight in but what I have got is a car boot cell V block and if I put that on the base of the drill and put that in there it should hold it reasonably vertical if my turning was very even okay and if you notice they're all quite quite evenly hand turned so that going like that I'll bullseye it with a smaller drill to start with so there's less chance of going wrong and then step it up and do the 9.5 mil for the 9 mil rods and I got to check my ferro rods so see you in a bit it's basically an old V block so we are again it's my latest 10 from firesteels.co.uk firesteels.co.uk there's the site and camera left his mobile number on there but I'll still test them because it's the way I am so get through the black first and I'm only trying to concentrate on just a little the end there so there's not going to be that much scratch left when I disappear it inside the handle so using the, an 01 blank that I've still got work to do square on there that's one next one yep yep they're definitely harder than that awful batch that I had let's say this at the moment is a kneeled O1 tool still. So it's not got the most aggressive corner. So that works. To do a, a comparison of a standard sort of variety, I'd use my Leverman, which is on my EDC, and I'd use the file, which is there. And you may be able to see, I don't know, on the file, you see a darkened section here. That's where I use ferro rod. So, yeah. So, yep, yeah, they're all standard. I'll test the other five off camera, but it just I'd be a, I'd be a complete pillock to just stick them in the handle without testing it, wouldn't I? and then the customer gets it and it's still untested nah, nah I'm testing each one so when you do receive them if you notice the scratch lines it's because I've made sure the damn thing works and I've changed I use a variety of materials I say a nil 01 isn't the hardest thing in the world your Swiss Army knife would probably be harder okay use, use the file section of a Swiss Army knife a Leverman file end um, you can use an old file harden up really hard or the back of a, a blade of a square back they're not that square and I can get a spark off of it so for me it's been tested I'll see you in a bit now this is one of those do as I say don't do as I do things If I bullseye that, where I think it's going to be in the middle, I 
that's pretty much in the middle it's a pilot hole for the, the correct drill later on plus if I mentioned earlier this hole goes slightly deeper so don't get that air pocket which gets that bicycle pump effect so I'll carry on do the rest and I'll dress them off on the sander but the V block seems to be working quite well also I need to make sure all the sawdust is gone so this doesn't settle on a piece of sawdust and upset it so it's not vertical in terms of the torque of this if that drill bit bit I made it spin it's not the end of the world Now for drilling the deeper hole, I've got this little bit of arrangement here. You should be able to see that there. If I come to camera, I've got some Forstner bit drilled a bit of softwood, so it's sat in there at varying sizes, and then this part of the drill vice clamps it and holds it tight. So it's not as true vertical as what the V clamp would be but at least I got that pilot hole to start with and not quite as deep as that original 5mm, 4mm hole Told you my garage, to which you will see. Can't polish it. Anyway, so they are now drilled and finished off on the end, like so. Ready for the fair rods. Slight change of plan. It can't be. Surely not. Yes, these ferro rods are good. Just think what it would look like if I used my angle grinder. <laughs> mm. 
Nice. I'm glad my garage leaks, hence my carpet is soaking wet. I wouldn't do this on an artificial carpet if the carpet was dry. As I say, I've been thinking about this for a, about a year now. If I go slow, it's all good. <coughs> Williams? Yes, sir. Are you sawing through a ferrocerium rod with a hacksaw blade? Yes, sir. Why? I wanted to see if it could be done, sir. Okay. Williams? Yes, sir. There's something wrong with your brain. I know, sir. But it's more fun doing it my way. <coughs> it's like the 4th of July here. Now it could be quite hot, I'm not going to pick that up yet. I'm going to use a glove. <laughs> okay, easing the vice. And easing the glove. Yes, so I hear. Ah. You're going. Use the angle grinder. Okay. So the whole plan was, you know, you get those strike forces, and the ferrocerium rod is only about that big. Stumpy. I think it looks quite cute. It's still big enough to use. Anyway, I'm going to make a couple up. Use them. See how they go. Anybody fancies a stumpy? That's fair rod, lads. Okay. Okay. And it's like, instead of being yay big with an extra long handle, they're just big enough with a small handle and a stumpy great 9mm ferro rod blank in it. So I'll, I'll see him, see how he work, and get back to you on it. If it ends out that they really are a bit too short, okay, I've only cut one up. It was fun when it lasted, and no, I'm not using the angle grinder on it. Okay. It's too much fire. Right. I'll let you know how they get on, but rather than me saying, oh, if you want one, you know, whatever, I'll give them a test out and see what I honestly think. But they, they start off at 38 mil, so the time he's in there, you could end up with about 30 mil, 29 mil stuck out the other end, which I think is big enough to actually get a strike off of, and you'll end up with something that will fit in a, a smaller pouch, a smaller pocket, a smaller this, a smaller that. If you were stuck, lost everything, and in your emergency kit you had one of them, you go, hey, great, all right, at least you got one. But say. I'll test them out first and see if they're actually usable, twee, fun, or to be honest, nah mate, we need the monsters. Okay, so Scott for my six blades, 
with a prototype stumpy mini Saxon scouty fire steel fair rod things I'm not using the angle grinder no so as I mix it up it's shout out time funky prepper of steerers stirrers very useful Call it a digital applicator. It's called my little finger. Dry. So what's his blade sign out? Thanks Darren, very useful. All the best, see you on the next one, let's go for my six blades.